because, you know, I just might crash and burn in the middle of this. I don't know. Hey guys. So in today's video, I'm going to be completing a puzzle from another brand that I have not tried before. And thanks to all of you who voted on my last community post on which one I should do next. I don't know why, I really had a hard time trying to pick which one I wanted to try. I've heard so many great things about Ravensburger and as well as Cobble Hill, so thank you for making that choice for me because for some reason I just couldn't do it. So the winner of that poll was the puzzle from the company Cobble Hill. And this one is called Venetian Cafe. It is 1,000 pieces and it is 26.625 by 19.25 inches when it's completed. The box itself is quite large, but the back does have a little information on the company itself. And it does mention how this company does use the finest inks and varnishes. And they feature linen textured paper and premium grade blue board and use 100% recycled chipboard. And another thing that they mention is really interesting to me is that it says no two pieces are alike. They are all random shaped pieces. And it does show you on the bottom here the different random shapes that they have. I kind of feel like just from that alone, this is going to take me a little longer than what a typical 1000 piece puzzle would take me. I really can't wait to open this one up and see what they look like. Will they be as crazy as the ones from Dowdle? I don't know, we'll see. That's quite exciting. I'm telling you, I've become so hooked on trying different brands and seeing what each one kind of offers in the puzzle experience. I already can't wait for the next puzzle brand that I'm gonna try. But anyways, back to Cobble Hill. Now, first impressions on this image. Now, if you saw my puzzle shop with me video, this is when I picked up this puzzle set and there was tons of other Cobble Hill sets that I could have chosen. But this one, like, really caught my eye. I mean, come on, take a look at this image. This is Venice. This specific scene at this specific moment is so peaceful. There's nobody around. My gondola is parked at the water here waiting for me to finish eating at this little trattoria on the side. Because, you know, who wouldn't want to stop for something to eat or drink when you're taking a little boat ride around town, right? Especially with all those enticing desserts in the window there. What a relaxing little spot. I can literally just sit here all day eating and drinking and just people watch. Even though there's really no people here, but you know what I mean. The only thing that might put me off from sitting here too long is if that cat doesn't jump off that barrel and stop staring at me. I don't like to be stared at when I'm eating. But anyways, once I'm done eating and drinking, I'll just hop back on my gondola there and head back home. Or you know what? Even better, that may very well be my apartment. But then again, I'm not too sure because those flowers up above in the window look too nice. I don't have much of a green thumb, so it's very possible it might not be my apartment. But then again, who knows? I might have enough money that I can hire someone to take care of them for me. Now, in terms of completion process with this, I kind of feel like, judging from the image, I don't necessarily feel like this is gonna be extremely difficult. Yes, there's random cut pieces, but I'm talking in terms of the image itself here. Honestly, I feel like I'm not gonna have the most difficult time sorting this. I could do a tray for the buildings, I could do a tray for like the area where the trattoria is, I could do a tray for the water, I may even do a tray for like flowers and plants in general just to kind of keep those grouped together and then fill in the gaps after completing the buildings. Now the box does give me the average piece size and it doesn't seem too small in my opinion. So I feel like I'm gonna be able to make out what is actually printed on these pieces pretty well. In general, I feel like the colors are very vibrant, but then again, we'll see. The puzzle pieces might have a blurry print on them. I don't know, I've never tried Cobble Hill, but judging from what you all have said, I kind of feel like this is gonna be good. Honestly, I think I'm feeling pretty confident about this one. But then again, I gotta stop thinking too much about my um, puzzle skills because, you know, I just might crash and burn in the middle of this, I don't know. I don't know, maybe I'm just too excited about this image. Like, I, I totally see myself in here, so I'm super excited to get this one started. You know what, enough nonsense talk. Let's open this up and let's see what it's gonna be like. All right, let's open this one up. Now this one does come in plastic wrap, so let's get this off first. Ooh. All right, so we have it in a plastic bag, and here is your, oh, I'm dropping things, 
poster. Nothing on the back. This is quite a, paper has a nice feel to it. Doesn't feel like it can easily tear. Feels like pretty good quality paper here. But look at that image, guys. That's a nice print. It's gonna be super useful whilst we're completing the puzzle. Let's get rid of this box and let's get to the pieces. The bag itself does have quite a bit of puzzle dust inside it, but hopefully that's all that there is. Let's check out these pieces here. Ooh, these feel really nice. Let's see, did I get dust on the table? No, not really. It looks like a majority of the dust. That was from the Dowdle puzzle. I forgot to take it off after I removed the puzzle, but that's okay. These feel pretty solid compared to other puzzle brands that I've tried. They're really hard, which is nice. Even like the tab areas, they don't feel very weak. Even when I'm trying to put a little bit of my force on it, which, you know, don't do that. But, you know, I'm just trying to test it out. I'm really loving the way these pieces feel. The print on it seems really good as well. And they're calling this chipboard. Got that blue board, which is probably what's giving it kind of like that harder feel to it compared to like, let's say, for example, a Seco piece, which is more like a almost like compressed cardboard if that's how you would describe it. These are probably the most solid feeling pieces I have felt with compared to all the puzzle brands that I've tried so far, to be honest. The size is not too bad, it's pretty good. And you know, it's true what they say, look at all these different pieces. No two pieces are alike, so that's gonna be super fun. I'm also really liking the vibrant color on this image print here. I mean, look at these pieces. Nothing looks blurry. Everything looks very solid. You don't have any dull colored prints here. Everything is vibrant. This looks fantastic. Now I really feel confident that I can get through this puzzle pretty easily. But then again, we'll see. And I'm really curious as to how well these are going to snap into each other as well. I'm trying to figure out the glare situation with these pieces though. Yeah, you're gonna have a little bit of glare on these, but to be honest, obviously if you have the light directly on top of your puzzle, you're gonna get glare. But I mean, I'm not getting like that off sheen really when I look straight at it. I kind of feel like this glare is really not too bad on this set. I don't know, it could just be my lighting today. I still have some natural light coming from my window, so that could be playing a role in it. Again, with the size and the quality of the color of the image print on these pieces, even if there is quite a glare when I start it, I don't really think it's gonna be a very big issue in terms of trying to you know, make out what I'm seeing on these pieces. I'll say it again, I'm feeling really good about this one, so you know what? Let's stop talking and let's start puzzling. Okie dokes, let's have a quick chat about how I sorted these pieces. Tray number one had, of course, the edges. Second tray was for the buildings. Third tray was for the plants. Fourth tray was for the sky. Fifth tray had pieces of the actual cafe building. Tray six had the table area. The seventh tray contained pieces that looked to be the boat, the water, the fence that's along the edge of the water, and the lamppost. And then the eighth tray, I just kind of left it for pieces that I couldn't figure out where to put them, kind of like my random tray. But I knew that as I moved along completing this puzzle that I would have to resort my trays. If you're new here, be sure to let me know down below if you are a sorter or not. Now, during my sorting process, I did find two pieces that had a little bit of damage to them, kind of like the print was peeling off, which wasn't a big deal. At this point, I'm more surprised now if I find a puzzle set with no damaged pieces to it. Now, I did realize as I was doing this that I wasn't doing the greatest job. And I also noted this when I started the edge pieces because I was missing a few edges. And I wasn't surprised by this as well because of all the random shaped pieces. And this reminded me a lot of the Dowdle puzzle that I just did, the Beauty and the Beast one, where some of the what I thought were edge pieces were actually slightly sloped and ended up somewhere else on the puzzle. So I knew I must have put actual edge pieces in the wrong trays, thinking that they belonged somewhere else within the puzzle. But again, no big deal. I knew I'd get to them at some point. Ooh. 
Now at some point, I really started to struggle with the lighting and glare. And this mainly happened when I was working on the puzzle at night. So I had no natural light coming from behind me from the window, which is, for me, it's optimal. It just made it tricky to kind of figure out the detail within the puzzle piece because the overall lighting in my room is pretty bad. I mean, really, I have to change lighting in my room because I just can't get it right sometimes. And it's so frustrating because just trying to figure out the light situation can be so time consuming. And there were other factors that played a role in this because of the lighting that I needed for filming. So really my best bet to get through this puzzle quickly was to do it during the daytime where I had the natural light in my room. If any of you have any suggestions on what you do to kind of help your glare situations when doing puzzles, please let me know down below. I'm sure it will not only help me, but other viewers who are having glare issues will read your comments as well. So yeah, these pieces do give off quite a bit of glare. Okay, now I'm going to be really honest here. I felt like the pieces did not fit very snug. The fit felt a little loose. And I mostly noticed this when I would try to transfer sections that I completed on the side of the table or on a tray. And it would kind of fall apart when I would pick it up. Now my puzzle scoop really did come in handy for moving small sections about. But even if I snagged the edge of a piece, it would kind of mess it up. So be gentle if you plan to move small completed sections around a bit or even move the whole puzzle on your work surface because I didn't really feel like it was a nice fitted fit, if that makes sense. I don't expect puzzles to have a very tight fit, but I want to feel like they're not going to come apart easily, almost like the Seiko puzzles. But I'm not going to say it's just like a Seiko puzzle in terms of crumbling to pieces. But from that alone, I kind of feel like this isn't going to stand up to being stored the way I usually prefer to store my puzzles. Which if you haven't seen my puzzle storage videos, I'll leave a link down below so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Better yet, here's an example of what I'm talking about looks like. But I don't know, maybe it was just an issue with how my set was cut in production. I'm not going to say that this is a cobble hill thing, as I really feel like I need to get another one or two sets completed from this brand before I make my final brand review of cobble hill puzzles. When I do my puzzle review videos, and if it's on a brand that I've never tried before, you're getting my initial honest, genuine, uninfluenced feelings and thoughts with the puzzle and the overall puzzle experience. Now, to be honest, I know that most of my glare situation would have been solved if I did my puzzle during the daytime. But, you know, sometimes I am persistent and I want to have puzzle time before bed. And aside from the fact that my lighting is extremely poor at night, it doesn't help that I'm struggling to keep my eyes open because I'm so tired. I'm tired right now. I need to stop puzzling at night. But anyways, now aside from the issues with fit, the feel of these pieces is fantastic. They are sturdy. The print is clear. The colors are bold. They're not blurry at all. So you can really see that detail really well with the right lighting, of course. I do think this puzzle would have taken me less time to complete if it just had, you know, the basic shapes. But honestly, the random cut pieces really made this such a fun challenge. You'd have a really big piece that you know immediately where they'd go but then you get these little itty bitty baby pieces where you couldn't really see what was going on in the actual piece itself but you know that's okay it made the challenge level shift throughout the process it really did make it exciting and of course i had the magnifier for my puzzle scoop so it was all good this puzzle took me about six hours to complete hmm this one took me a while I have to stop puzzling when I'm tired. But anyways, yeah, I had glare and fit issues, but I still say that I very much enjoyed this Cobble Hill puzzle. The image is absolutely beautiful. I love their choice of colors and tones, and the different shapes made this a fun and interesting challenge. You just can't get bored with it, especially when you have a beautiful image like this. And this set does come with a poster, even though it's on the smaller side compared to the other brands that I've done recently. But hey, it's better 
better than nothing, it at least gives you the full image instead of what you see on the box itself, which is partially covered by some logos. Any poster is a positive for me. I really do recommend you try a puzzle set from Cobble Hill. They really are a great value. Be sure to hit that like button if you're a Cobble Hill fan, and be sure to let me know down below what your puzzle experience has been with this brand, or share with us which sets you've done. Oh, now I can finally sit and have my coffee and cake. Maybe a soup too if it's on the menu. And then maybe I'll just shoo that cat away before my food comes. Well, if you're new here and you'd like to catch me for another puzzle review or see what else I get up to with puzzles, be sure to subscribe and I'll tell you more crazy stories about me inside my puzzles. Anyways guys, thanks for hanging out with me and I will see you in the next one.